I'm going to have to do some work on the SciTech trim wheel. This is a trim wheel. Uh, it's pretty good. It works. It's you know it's fairly well. I mean it's it's plasticky, but it but it's generally realistic-ish. It's a Cessna-style trim wheel, which is appropriate for the Twin Otter. Although the Twin Otter one looks a bit chunkier. The problem with this is uh, the same problem that you'll have with any absolute positioning trim wheel in an aircraft that uses autopilot. The Twin Otter makes heavy use of autopilot and in particular it does auto trim when you're using things like the well, the vertical modes they're called. Uh, for my purposes to date it's most most intrusive using the airspeed hold. Basically it's basically it's not compatible with an absolute positioning trim wheel such as this. So I'm going to have to do something about that. What I'm hoping to do is convert this, well not exactly convert it, but add something on so that it also drives an encoder as well as whatever it, I mean the irony is it is actually implemented using an optical encoding sensor, uh, but electronics are contrived to actually make it present to Windows as an absolute, as, as if it was a potentiometer, as, a, so as, as an absolute position. Alright, here we are tooling along in the Twin Otter and I'm going to demonstrate the problem with the SciTech ProFlight elevator trim wheel in conjunction with the autopilot. So we're cruising along uh, currently doing 120 knots. I've selected a view where you can see out of the windows but also we can see the trim wheel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow it down artificially to about 80 knots. I've selected indicated airspeed hold, uh, airspeed hold. Well, I will do that on the autopilot. So I'm going to slow it down to about 80 knots just by pulling the nose up. We're at 80 knots now and I'm going to engage the autopilot and I'm going to take my hands off. You should see indicators showing that it's trimming up automatically. We've got trim in motion, we've got trim up, trim down indicators separately there. But if we look at the trim wheel, it's actually moving the trim wheel automatically. What I'll do now is I'm going to shove the nose down and it wants to maintain that speed so it's going to aggressively trim nose up which you should see on that trim indicator. At this point I'm going to disengage the autopilot and just let go. And I'm going to just make sure we straighten out so I don't crash while I'm talking. So what we should see now is we've still got that aggressive nose up trim because the trim wheel's where the autopilot left it. I'm having to substantially hold pressure on forward pressure on the yoke to balance that out. So what we naturally want to do now is trim that pressure off by spinning the trim wheel forward. Now the problem with that is as soon as I do that, as soon as I touch the trim wheel we get an instantaneous change in trim which upsets everything. And what you might notice is it's actually reset itself to approximately neutral trim. Now it's actually reset itself to where it was before the autopilot was engaged. And the reason it's done that is as soon as you touch that wheel FSX reads the absolute position of that wheel and updates the trim setting of the aircraft to match. Now in the real aircraft that trim wheel actually moves, it has motors in it and it actually moves under the guidance of the autopilot. So when you switch off the autopilot what you see on the trim indicator is actually the current trim setting. Now obviously my SciTech trim wheel isn't motorised and so it doesn't move with the autopilot and that's basically the root of the problem. There's no sensible software solution to this. The only solution is not to use an absolute positioning trim wheel. 
So today I've been engaging in a bit of archaeology. I've got my SciTech Cessna trim wheel, which is for the well, which is going to be for the elevator trim, and which for reasons I've explained elsewhere isn't really suitable for any aircraft that has an autopilot. And that's basically because you will recall it's an absolute position sensor. It's actually implemented with a pulse generator, an encoder, a rotary encoder. But the way it's implemented, um, the device presents to Windows as an absolute position sensor, which, which is the problem. But because it's a rotary encoder, and after having done a bit of research on the web, I decided to uh, dis check out whether I can tap into that and get pulses and feed them into a Bodner board. So what we're looking at here is the inside of the SciTech trim wheel. This is the wheel itself which protrudes on the other side. Uh, this, this is obviously the circuit board here which has the, the guts of it on. Now the important bit is you should see this large wheel here. It's edge on so you can't see it but it's a, round, it's a big round disc with slots cut in it and it's basically an optical, well, it's part of the optical sensing mechanism rather like it used to work in a mouse when they were still mechanical. So on this side of the wheel we've got an infrared emitter which is this little clear component here. On this side we've got an infrared receiver which is this little black thing. It's kind of about the size and shape of an old-fashioned transistor. And it's got four connectors soldered onto the board. What I've done is I've soldered onto two of those connectors and it's the two, uh, and these solder connections on the back side of the board, so we can't see them here. And it's the two connections that are closest to the edge of the board in this direction. And they weren't easy to solder onto, they're tiny little connections. I, I'm not sure how secure they are, but uh, they're good for now. And let's see what I found. So, with those wires soldered in place, I've plugged this into the USB port so it's got power, connected up my multimeter to the ends of the wires, and I see signs of life. So what I'm going to do is put the continuity tester function on. I'm going to spin the wheel. We get pulses. So that's pretty damned awesome. That's going to do, hopefully, what I need it to do. So the next uh, part of the challenge is to plug it into the Bodner board and see if that recognises it. And if it does, we're away. We've got. Uh, we still retain the native functionality of this device through the USB connection. But in, in addition, if this works like I expect it to work, we'll also have a non-absolute or a relative positioning rotary encoder, which we can use as the elevator trim. And because it still works natively as well, we can leave that plugged in, and we can use that input in other aircraft. In fact we can use either input in any aircraft. So fingers crossed we'll be back. So here we are again uh, in the Windows control panel. We're going to plug in the Bodner board now with the SciTech trim wheel connected. So we've got a new device on there. Button box interface. We do game controller settings. Now that's interesting, if you look in the list of installed controllers we've got the, as we expected, ProFlight Cessna trim wheel and the button box interface. Uh, so we'll leave the trim wheel alone for now. We're going to go into the BBI32 properties and I've hooked it up to button 1 and button 2 so if I spin the wheel we're getting pulses for button 1 that way very quickly and then spin it the other way, pulses for button two. Fantastic! So that's, um, that's great news really about the um, trim wheel. I'm hoping that's going to be the complete solution. I have a slight nag, nagging feeling about the, the speed at which those buttons were, button clicks were being sent. You know, which, which if it's too fast would make the trim wheel too sensitive. I'm trying to think in my head if there's a way of slowing that down in FSU IPC. I don't think there is. So we'll have to try that out. Uh, 
but it's looking pretty helpful at the minute. So I'll wire that up a little bit more robustly. Then I'll, I'm going to plug it in quite soon. I think I'll do this into um, FSX and just check that I get a good, you know, usable trim action from that. And in the tradition of showing the rough with the smooth, in a slightly less successful development today, I've uh, taken delivery of five USB cables for the Bodner boards. And uh, <laughs> in the process, I've discovered that USB 3 plugs are not the same as USB 2 plugs. Um, I didn't take enough notice. When I was ordering these, they were advertised as USB 3 cables, super fast, and I thought, well, that's all right, you know, they'll fall back to USB 2, and I'm sure it says somewhere on here, compatible with USB 2, but uh, the, it's a different bloody plug, so useless. But it was only like 20 quid, £4 each, so I'll take those back to Curry's over the weekend, hopefully they'll give me my money back. And uh, we'll start that process again. <laughs> Never take your eye off the ball. That's what I say. That's what I say now. <laughs>